Today what I have for you is a bit different, it's a bit uh, unorthodox, it'll be an interview that'll be taking place in the next few minutes with, uh, with a young brother by the name of Young Bart. He's an actor, producer, chef, and uh, he's a multi-dimensional talent, and that's what a lot of people um, fail to realize in this day and age, like, to be an entertainer is not just one thing, you actually are to do more than one thing you are to not necessarily hold your expertise in one particular area but you are to showcase just how much uh, just how much you have to offer not just to the world but to yourself and for yourself by expressing yourself to the first extent of your humanity and which will allow the maximum capacity of all of our young young talent some people feel that they must remain on let's say comic relief others feel that they may just specialize in just cooking but those who are highly in tune with themselves and equally creative they add comedy as well as culinary arts to make what we call content and in this day and age content is king and many people do not necessarily understand that the types of content though it may be king it actually turns as it as um turns turns itself into relevance and relevance ensures that your career will change or your life will change and i actually commend not just him but all my other uh young talent young talented individuals in the world so in a few seconds here i'll be sure to add young bart who needs no real introduction he has put out several albums but two in particular which would be he lit life is an instrumental that was um what is it was registered last year and then hibernation which had just came out it was released february 2nd of this year and today we'll be talking about hibernation and if you aren't aware of who he is already i've already written a, a review and interview about him i wrote that in october that is up i will post the link below so that you can watch it i mean read it excuse me but without further ado it is 4 p.m and i see the brother is obviously <laughs> duly excited and wait awaiting his time to shine so everybody please give me just one moment while i bring in my boy What's going on, Sam? How you doing? I'm doing good, good man. I appreciate you. You're welcome, you're welcome. How's your day going so far? So far, so good, man. Uh, I went, I went grocery shopping earlier, but now I'm just chilling. All right, that's good. Well, matter of fact, before we get into the interview, how's the job treating you at GT, man? Man, I'm loving every bit of it. Uh, they treat me like a king, you know. Like it was quite an introduction going in there. I had to pick up kind of the slack of the previous mm. chef but for the most part like the ladies love me you know every day i'm doing something different every week it's a new menu so it's a challenge but you know for eight hours out of the day man it's totally worth it having air weekend off as well Are you got the weekends off son? yeah man and that's how i was able to squeeze this interview in because monday through friday man like i pretty much have to be to work at like six in the morning mm. and then typically when um the nighttime chef gets in i help her out and then i'm on my way out the door so typically i get home about 3 p.m every day it's sometimes later but air weekend i'm off and that's all that really matters okay to me. i actually like that man i'm proud of you i'm happy for you i appreciate it man you know i appreciate all you know you've done for me because you know i know you follow me on twitter and sometimes i go on my rents but you know thank you for supporting me you know because sometimes i'll be you know, Twitter is like the one social network where I can like truly express myself and not mm -hmm. get canceled. Yeah, like we're actually going to go into that's what I when I was uh, speaking to you a few days ago. This interview is going to be a bit different because now you know how our phone call goes, like with the prelim, the notes, and the questions and stuff like that. And today we're going to actually have an actual 
personable conversation, not just as it pertains to your art, but everything as a whole. You feel yeah. what I'm saying? And of course, I like I said, I was gonna have your um album playing, but I don't have my other phone with me, so pardon me for that. Oh, good. But before we get into the the actual topic at hand, I do want to ask you about your social media usage and how you're using it to not necessarily just garner and garner influence and an audience, but how you're able to express yourself on the day to day. Well, pretty much like if I'm going through something or if I see something trending, I'll chime in on it. But I'm always going to keep my listeners and followers engaged to what's going on in my life. Like when I started my YouTube channel in 2021, nobody knew I was going to start a YouTube channel. So like I use Instagram and Twitter to promote it. But then eventually once, you know, the subscribers started rolling in, I had to keep them engaged. So typically whenever I go through something like I have to use Twitter particularly because I think that's where most people typically watch me for the most part. I feel like with Instagram, you kind of don't really know who's watching you unless like you post something and they double tap on it or, you know, leave a comment. Cause it's like Instagram's kind of a ghost app. You never truly know who watches your posts or sees mm -hmm. them unless you actually get a reaction or notification saying that they actually saw it. Yes, sir. Like I actually, I can attest to the same. The only difference with me, I would say is, um, matter of fact, before I go into that, how long have you been on Twitter? Damn, man. Truthfully, since 2009. And the only reason why I know that so vividly is because when I was young, I used to watch 106 in Park. And I remember they used to always talk about Twitter. And I was thinking, what is Twitter? And it was a new social. They, I think they was calling it social networking back then. They wasn't calling yes. it social media because at the time I had MySpace. But then they just kept talking about Twitter. And I was like, what is Twitter? And then finally, I just built the nerve to make an account one day and at first I was just gonna call my Twitter username Young Bart, but then some guy had already took that name. So I was like, okay, well what about Young Bart One? So mm -hmm. I've stuck with that name ever since. That's crazy, son. Like with me, like when I talk about social media and its usage and stuff like that, Twitter it was never one of those platforms that actually stood out because as you mentioned, it's being a social networking app. And my understanding of the whole beginning, the origin is like based off of marketing so when i asked you a few moments ago how do you express yourself with your with your influence and audiences and stuff of that nature it's like when you market yourself how do you as not as an individual but as a brand as a product how do you market yourself on social media apps and specifically twitter how do you market your um your talents uh -huh. Uh, well, you know, being that I do so much, like I'm a music producer, an actor, a chef, and I'm forgetting one. Did I say YouTuber? Yes. You know, tip, typically, uh, that's, uh, you know, that's when I use the name Young Bart. I'll say something like, just released a new beat on BeatStars, check it out, or I'll share the link to my YouTube video. You know, like, that's when the whole Young Bart username kind of comes into play. That's when I start marketing with that. Same with like Snapchat, LinkedIn, or Instagram also. Like whenever I'm promoting something I just did, like, you know, I use all my social networks to know what I just promoted, opposed to just, if I'm making a regular post, I just talk how a normal person is. Like, oh, you know, why did Donald Trump just tweet that knowing that we're, we got bigger issues in life? <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, like Twitter, it, Twitter and all my social networks as a whole, like I know how to use them at the appropriate time. I got you. And it's like, like even with uh, mentioning your, your, um, your music as well as your cooking, I wanted to ask you, have you ever thought of, because I know you have a, a nice YouTube channel and your numbers are growing up, going up each and every day. And I wanted to ask, have you ever thought or do you have any videos out there with you cooking alongside your album playing in the background? uh actually i do um just recently this year uh because i just moved into my new place mm -hmm. so you know um pretty much i was kind of going through a little struggle like you know getting my fridge back up to standings and building my seasoning cabinet up so like i just made a video of me making a struggle vegetable soup and the reason why i called it that is because you know 
Of course, it's not my typical vegetable soup that I make, but I'm going to make it for what I have around the house. And so I did have a few beats from Lit Life playing in the background. If I can remember right, I know I played Juice. I think I played Hopscotch mm -hmm. and I think Legend. You know, those are some of the fan favorites, I would say. Mm -hmm. But um, moving forward, I, I'm guessing when I do get back to making content, I will be promoting Hibernation as well. I got you. It's definitely like um, what's um, uh, what what is the name of that damn? I can't play it right now, but what is it? Defrost, like yeah. uh, hibernation. That's one of yo, <laughs> yo that yo. I'm telling you right now, like if you could make like for let's just say for the sake of the conversation, if you could make a carrot cake from scratch with defrost playing in the background, you might just get a hundred dollars from me immediately. Wow, <laughs> that's <laughs> like straight up. That's crazy, man. Uh, not to cut you off, but like that's actually one of the first beats that I actually did make for Hibernation because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I typically don't play my music for anybody else. And I was on FaceTime with a good friend of mine and I played him Defrost and he was like, bro, I love that beat. He was like, you should let me have it. And I was like, no way, man. Like, I just made this yesterday. Like, it's not really mm -hmm. finished yet. And he was like, he was all like, no, bro. Like, I really love that beat. I can make a song to it. So. I actually let him have the beat and I was like, bro, I'm giving you 48 hours, you know, make a good song. And he actually sent me the song and I listened to it and I was like, bro, wow, like you you, you gave this beat a life because, you know, when I'm making a beat, I, I often freestyle the beats mm -hmm. I make, but I oftentimes make a little, you know, bridge and a hook when I'm making the beat too. But like, I, didn't, I don't ever actually make a song to the beat because I'm not like a singer slash rapper. So, when he sent me back that song, I just knew, I was like, wow, like that beat really does have potential because I just called it Defrost because it gave me like a feeling of like wanting to freeze something, but then put it, you know, thaw it out and then freeze it again and use it again. Like that's kind of where hibernation comes like, in. But, recycle, rinse, and repeat. Yeah. But I'm glad you love that beat because I know when I first sent you the album, it kind of was out of order. Yeah. But like, Defrost is kind of one of those tracks where, like, I specifically put it towards like a certain section of the album for yeah. that reason. But I'm glad to see that you know you actually got a good review of it. Yes, sir. How was there? Um, and now to actually go into the topic at hand for the release of Hibernation, how has your response been? Like, have mm -hmm. people been reaching out to you asking you for beats or anything like that? Uh so well for the most part the response has been pretty positive a lot of people have different favorites and they overall feel like this project is a little bit more focused than lit life was which mm. i can agree upon myself but as far as like have i gotten any more traction as far as people wanting to buy beats and stuff from me i would say not much has really changed but i have noticed an increase in my youtube you know like i think if anything my YouTube channel has caught the most impact, but not as far as like beat sales and actual artists wanting to work with me. That hasn't really happened just yet. I got you. I got you. With um, and I bring that up because well, it's a two part uh situation. When I had asked you about your your content and making music at the same time, like cooking and listening to one of your albums, are you familiar with um, what's his name, Crank Lucas? Uh, no. I don't think I'm familiar with him. I'll be sure to, to when this interview is finished, I'll be sure to uh, send you over a few of Crank Lucas's videos. But one song in particular, he had created a beat for Joyner Lucas and um, Will Smith. It's called Will. Have you ever heard that song? I'll no. be sure to send that to you as well. But I, I bring that up because you have a, a similar talent. Wait, and wait. Wait a second. I think I had heard that song because didn't Will like make a video for it and stuff? And, like, it was a remix. Yes. Yeah, it went viral. Yeah, I heard that yes. before. Okay, yeah. So that's why I bring it up because you have not necessarily a similar talent in regards to the way that he distributes or makes his content, but the the sound is phonically, excuse me, sonically, the way it sounds, it sounds very similar. Like that song in particular, it reminds me of one of these songs that you have on I'm not necessarily sure what album it is, but you use a flute, not heavily, but it's in, in there. It's a high pitched sound. And I hmm. won't even, I shouldn't even call it a flute, but it's like a melodic, soft gesture. 
So I bring it up so that you could not necessarily draw your parallels, but know that there are similar people in your field that have not as much uh, as a, a, a following as you or have a more following of you, but I'm letting you know that what you're putting out there is great. Like it's literally in the pocket. And I wouldn't suggest that you change anything at all. I appreciate that. Um, Cause I actually did want to talk about the upcoming beat tape project. I mean, you know, the upcoming next beat tape because I'm not going to just stop in hibernation, but mm. uh, pretty much like the reason why I'm calling it hibernation is because I am about to kind of take a little break from creating content and posting just because of the fact of my professional job is starting to become a bit much. And also just, you know, for the sake of my acting career, you know, I oftentimes didn't give as much attention as to going to gigs and being on set because I was creating music. So with mm -hmm. hibernation, you know, this is going to be like something I give my listeners and fan base just to hold them over for quite some time, you know, but I don't have an official date for my next release, but I will say definitely before the year is out, like I want to drop my third project, but hibernation as a whole, like, you know, it has a lot of inspiration behind it. Uh, most notably my first, my, I'm sorry, my favorite Kanye album, 808s and Heartbreaks, but also, um, I don't know if you listen to Russ, I remember you um, yes. reviewed, You remember, I remember you reviewed his album, Santiago, but uh, my favorite album from him is actually Zoo. So um, that's kind of where hibernation comes in because like I went to his tour, but like that album got me through so much because in the year 2018, I was grinding to become a sous chef. And I just remember every day in Wyoming walking to work, I would listen to that album and he can make a no skip album. Like he's the type of artist where you can listen to his album on shuffle and find a song that you like, you know, and you can just play it all the way through without skipping a track. So that's kind of where hibernation comes in inspiration from like the animal sound effects and some of the beats. Mm -hmm. Like I got it from that. Yeah. Like Russ is like, Russ is one of those, one of those unique artists who has a, his own individual sound. And that's what I was saying to you about yours. You have a unique individual sound and I wouldn't change it for anything in the world because once you find that sense of originality and individuality nothing can top that and that's what's missing in a lot of these not necessarily young talented artists but just artists in general originality and individuality like there's a lane for you you stay in it and you create that because there's no glass ceiling for you as the artist you as a talent there's no glass ceiling but when you try to blend in with other folks and try to do what they do, that's when you come into ruts and dry patches, tough times, trial and tribulations and things like that. that. So that's why when we talk outside of like talking like industry stuff, it's like, yo, you have it all, bro. You have a good head on your shoulders. Your heart is in the right place. You have all of my continued support and I wish nothing but success for you. But for me to 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 say that I need to also understand you say you have a third beat, beat tape coming up? Yes, sir. What um will that be any different from the the past one the past two that you have put out? Yes. And the reason why I'm saying it's gonna be different is because there is something from my music that I have noticed that I haven't done fully, and that is that I haven't put out a full, full trap project yet okay i mean don't don't get me wrong lit life has maybe seven or eight trap beats and hibernation might have five maybe six and they're all inspired but my next project i definitely want it to be all trap beats and the reason why i'm making this commitment to myself is because the other day when i was um just you know watching cable tv because uh you know that's the thing. Nobody really has cable anymore. But as an actor, I've made the investment to get cable again because one day I might see one of my gigs I was a part of premiere and I need to be prepared to see it at any time anywhere. But I was watching a commercial and it was it was a commercial from like my childhood, the Empire Today commercial. Like they had made a jingle or something, but like I noticed they did like a modern day track beat like challenge and i remember listening saying like this sounds good but 
you know, now you guys are making trap beats and commercials now. So like, I'm saying all that to say like, that's what my music is missing. Like I haven't shown the world that I can make a modern day trap beat in full capacity. Cause don't get me wrong. I live in Atlanta now and Atlanta pretty much, I'm not going to say Atlanta established trap music. I mean, I could be misquoting that, but I definitely think it started here and I can't be living in Atlanta making beats and not be on the same wave as them, you know, because it, now it looks like I'm trying to be something that I'm not. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? Yes. So so with, with the next beat tape, that's going to be the challenge I make for myself. Like I want to finally step into the trap sound. I mean, even though I've already experimented with it and I do have a few, but like I think if I want to really grow as a music producer, like more producers will respect me more if I start making more trap beats. I got you. Well, let me ask you this. Do you think that isolating trap beats to to get to gain a newfound respect will bring them to, to respecting your sound and hearing more from looking to hear more from you? Or do you think that actually creating a uh, I don't even know how to phrase this. Do you think that creating Getting trap beats will actually just garner more respect and influence, or will it actually change the overall look of what you'll do? Oh, oh man, that's a tough one. Um, I definitely think it, it could potentially change my overall look, but for the most part, like it's kind of something more that I want to do as a producer because the stuff that I've been making with the past two projects, I feel like I've been doing that type of experimental stuff mm-hmm. in my career all my career so now i finally want to tell myself you don't have to be so you know different all the time just to gain listeners now you can finally just do what everybody wants you to do but still do it your way i got you what um when you uh when you're actually in the creative process this is what i wanted to ask you before and i forgot when you're actually in the creative process and you just mentioned kanye's 808s and heartbreaks being one of your favorite albums so throughout let's say a six hour period when you're creating a beat are you listening to anything while you're creating or do you just are you listening to the sounds in your head uh most of the sounds in my head because typically when i'm creating music i don't like to hear anything in the background like because don't get me wrong i have worked with other producers in the same room as me but i would prefer to just be alone just because of the fact of just having more space to myself you know Mm -hmm. because when you're sharing a space and you're trying to create something you know you feel like you're rushing and i don't like to feel like i'm ever rushing through anything because if you rush through something you're more likely to mess something up i got you i have um i have like two more questions and these are not necessarily based off of the education of the audience who's viewing this but personally i would like to know do you play any instruments uh no i don't i mean i have a midi pad and a piano but that's not that's not the same Mm. thing but you know i've always wanted to know how to play the piano you know maybe one day maybe one day in life i'll get there but you know no i'm not a trained professional i got you and i asked because when certain beats are made particularly sometimes with trap beats they have very sublime usage of not just the drums, hi hats, and stuff like that, but their synthesizers are changed in a di- different type of key. So I asked to to get an understanding of with you going into specifying in trap beats from now until possibly the, the near future of being established as a trap beat producer. What type of of sound are you going for? What will you be using? Uh. Hmm. That's a good question. Uh, well, I don't know if you're familiar with like digital audio workstations and what I use, but um, FL Studio, um, that's pretty much my go-to. Mm-hmm. They have so many different synthesizers and you know just VSTs. Like, I want to finally kind of revisit the ones that I've been neglecting because like I don't know how to use Nexus. Um, I have been using Flex. That's pretty much what I have been using the past few projects. So, like, definitely I want to finally use the stuff I've been paying for. Like, there's thousands, if not hundreds, of sounds out there. So, like, 
I'm going to kind of search up on YouTube, do a few little videos and see kind of what are being used and just kind of gain knowledge from that one. Okay. Okay. And of course I have, I have loads and loads of questions because I don't want to wrap this interview and leaving a few stones unturned. Now you mentioned moments ago about being a sous chef and just being a culinary, being in the culinary arts, right? Yeah. What, uh, what would you say is your favorite dish to cook? I'm always going to have to say lasagna. Yeah. <laughs> My man, that's a good brother. I mean, I knew I liked you. I knew I liked you. You're a good man. Yeah, man. Because lasagna is one of those foods where, you know, there's steps that you have to make. And, you know, there's certain steps that you have to make. I mean, certain steps you have to take. Mm -hmm. And then there's certain steps that if you don't take, you know, it can come out a certain type of way. With lasagna, it's of course, it's going to be good when you eat it hot and ready. But it's also just as good the second day because all those flavors have marinated and set and you get to really taste the seasoning like i love it when you reheat lasagna after the next day and you can taste the oregano the cheese mm. and the sauce all at once and then you see what like the noodles with the texture has gotten it's just it's a real italian chef's kiss <laughs> right <laughs> i respect that now with you being an actor as well as a chef mm. do you have any let's say childhood inspirations that have come from you pursuing this career presently? Definitely. Um, my favorite show growing up was Keenan and Kel, Just Jordan. Um, what else? Uh, I mean, Everybody Hates Chris. Uh, pretty much my favorite actors were Keenan and Kel, um, Lil JJ. Um, you know, so I like what I liked about them is they were very situational comedy. Like, you know, they knew how to make us laugh with a situation. But they also knew, like, you know, how to have a strong facial expression and how to carry attention. So, you know, I like to see stuff like that. And I like how, you know, in the modern day, a lot of these childhood actors who I saw, you know, I'm starting to see them again. Like, Wild and Out, they had an All That Reunion episode, and I got to see Keenan and Kel on there. Mm -hmm. uh, I got to see Good Burger, too. You know, there was a few mixed reviews about that movie, but I got, I, I liked what they was going with that. Um, with just Jordan, uh, you know, I feel like sometimes people have forgotten about that show, but that's one of that's like a childhood classic to me. Like I don't understand why, you know, sometimes these networks, you, you know, they bury the good shows mm -hmm. and then they fabricate. I'm, I mean, not fabricate. They oversaturate the shows that aren't that good. But you know, yeah. it's all marketing and it's all, all for money. Yeah. Yes, sir. And I was actually like, it's ironic that you say that because I was actually looking at um trying to get a better understanding of what it meant to have a show in syndication. And some shows, whether they have 40 to 100 episodes, they're not necessarily going to be syndicated, which means that they're not necessarily going to be distributed to many different platforms, whether they're on brand like uh, CBS, uh, TBS, uh, CNN, whatever, anything like that. But they'll go to like the low brow, I'm sorry to say it like that, but low brow, like we had as a child, like you remember UPN where it had the Parkers yeah. and all that stuff on there like that. So it just really depends on, like you say, saturation and actual marketable value. And not even just that, if it's not a commercial success in that particular environment, they're going to automatically assume that that appeal is not there. So it's not going to be a commercial success to take over um, the nation, let alone a region. So it's like, yeah, when you mentioned the Just Jordan and a few others, it's like some shows were taken off the air not because of anything other than money and marketing. They want to watch where their money is being distributed. Now, yeah. with, now with you being an actor, how is that going for you, bro? Like, I really want to know. Like, I know you've been on a few shows lately, but I want to know how it's going. Wow, man. Uh, well, I will say it is a little slow i mean you know like you can look the part and be the part but that doesn't always mean that they're going to give it to you so like what i use is i use backstage so um they post castings daily weekly and whatnot and sometimes you know they're not going to respond to you right away and sometimes they'll respond to you weeks and months later but to, to thoroughly answer your question like man i actually 
just recently got to be a part of a movie with somebody famous. Like I'm dead happy, but it's coming out sometime this year. Hmm. I'm not going to pry out in the, in the public space and stuff like that. I ask uh, demographic questions. Is that okay? You won't get in trouble, will you? No, no. You could ask that. Okay. Is it a person, male or female? It's a male. Black or white? Black. Old or young? Old, but... Uh... I love movies and shit like that. Like You can already tell by our conversation. Hmm. I'm, I'm genuinely curious now. All right, now, no, nah, just going. That's too much. I ain't gonna do that to you. What um? All right, what type of movie star are they? Let's put it that way: comedy, action, romance, thriller, suspense. Uh, well, this is, is an action movie, but for the most part, like I think they're pretty diverse. Like they've done it all. You know, they've done television, they've done music. You know, so like this person is well known in the entertainment industry. Uh, damn, like, you, you make it harder. Cause it's... I, I know, man, because I feel like you know who it is, but you can't yeah. say it. Yeah. And I won't say it, given the nature of, I mean, you being a part of it. I'm not going to try to jeopardize your money, you feel what I'm saying? Or your dream. That's not in my... Yeah. No, nah, we good. But definitely, like, like, that's, like, the one thing that I've done this year. Uh, I've done another uh, TV show, but, like, for the most part, like, that's why I'm pretty much gonna put my focus on acting more. Like I love music and don't get me wrong, like making beats has gotten me so far in life, but like being an actor now, like I have to make time for mm -hmm. that too. So, but you know, this doesn't necessarily mean I'm about to stop making beats right now. It's just, I'm not gonna be posting as much content as I have been. So like hibernation, I hope all my listeners and fans, you know, they get a feel for this project and they enjoy it for a while because I don't think I'm gonna be dropping any music for a while. All right, I got you. And before I let you go, because, of course, we're running a little bit over time okay. again. This is the last question I want to ask you, and I, I actually want you to think about your answer before you give it. With all that, that you do presently for your life and for your future, where do you think you rank in your childhood eyes? Wow, man. Hmm. Um, are you, are you looking for like a number no, or like, I'm looking at like the inner child is probably one of the most key assets to who we become as adults. So even though you're a 20 to 30 year old black male, I want you to actually, this is introspective. I want you to actually look at yourself and see, am I that little, am I someone that little boy can look up to? Cause I think you are. I think you're a model citizen. Outside of all of the things that you do, I think that if you used to look in the mirror and see your younger self, you would actually be proud of who you become. Most definitely. Um, I will say I definitely feel you know, I am proud of myself and I could definitely. I, I, I'm trying to answer exactly what you said, but that's all good. You know, I can obviously tell that the wheels are turning and it's something that's not necessarily challenging you to think about it but it's like i actually never thought of this before yeah yeah i mean because definitely i did have a upbringing and you know i had a life that i wanted to live for myself but i don't feel i've lived up to everything i want to do you know like, with me being an actor like now that is something that i've always wanted to do but i don't think i've lived a full actor's career yet mm -hmm. you know like i still want that one speaking role that everyone remembers me for i still want to be on a movie poster one day and everybody knows who daquan piner is because that's another thing by me calling myself young bart like is that what's going to be people remember me for or are they going to remember me for my real name so you know i have to you know make way for both of those names you feel me yeah I but, but i guess to answer your question more directly i definitely am proud of myself and the inner child like if i could see who i was 20 years ago and to who i am now like i'm definitely pat myself on the back that's that's what we're looking for that's what i'm glad to hear that and i'm not only glad that i asked but i'm actually glad that someone could actually see that about themselves because many people continue to look for that external stamp or validation even approval but when you can know and understand that that person on the inside is the only person that needs to stamp you, that's between you and God. 
And young brother, you got it, man. I'm proud of you. I'm happy to know you. I appreciate it, man. And I definitely want to, you know, keep in touch with you because I'm still going to write my book. Uh, Actually, uh, I probably should have had it a little closer to me, but uh, I've been writing my book, you know, like it's still coming out hopefully when I'm 30 because that's going to be, that's going to be the name of the book, The Life of a 30 Year Old, because I feel like all my life I've been an adult. I got you, man. And I'm looking forward to that. So whenever it's in publication and in the works for to coming out and bring it into the world, please be sure to let me know. I'm right there with you, bro. Absolutely, my brother. And I, I appreciate you as well. All love, man. You enjoy the rest of your day, okay? Man, take care. You too. Peace.